Welcome back guys, uh, 30 in 30 challenge, data recovery videos. If you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel because that's what's gonna be happening. Uh, it's been one week straight, running strong, and uh, I'm getting more and more motivated by the day with all of the feedback I've been getting from you guys. Thank you so much, I couldn't be uh, more grateful for this. So uh, today's video, we're gonna be doing some work on this card. It's a no-name micro SD card that we're gonna test a few things with. It's an absolute orphan. Uh, it has no name, nobody wants to claim responsibility for creating this thing. It's sad, it failed. It probably has some data that clients need back. We have few options, guys. Uh, when we're working with micro SD cards, monolithic devices, or NAND flash devices in general, we have several uh, ways of communication that can be established depending on the state of the unit. So if the unit is totally dead and uh, the own, there's no communication through the controller in any way, the only option for us would be to use NAND protocol adapter and break this thing out, read the NAND protocol, and then reconstruct the data from it as if it's a puzzle. The way that I explain it, uh, the best analogy that I have for explaining how uh, data can be uh, recovered from uh, a NAND storage device it's similar to um, a puzzle or a Lego set that you buy at a store and it comes in a box. And when uh, the first thing you do is you open this box up, opening the box up would be, uh, you know, connecting and beginning to read the NAND protocol uh, and what's inside of the uh, uh, crystals. Um, then you empty out all your chips and that's when you obtain your first copy of the dump. Then you need to if it's a puzzle, then you need to flip all of the uh, puzzle pieces uh, picture side up. That would be performing error correction in the um, inside of the software already. You got to make sure that your, all your pages are corrected, so the final picture actually is valid. Now, uh, and as the last step is the assembly, and that's removal of the mix and uh, converting uh, these this physical image into a logical image. Logical image gets assembled uh, with uh, either translator option, uh, virtual translator option, sector number, or a block number sequence. These, all of these assemblies uh, can be done using different tools and uh, that would be kind of like the last resort that I would uh, assume to take with the device when everything else has failed. But by everything else, what do I mean? I want to make sure that the card has no other options that might be uh, less time consuming, less complicated, uh, and uh, possibly could bring better results than assembling data directly from the NAND. NAND recovery doesn't always end up being perfect. NAND recovery gives us only uh, the results that can be obtained. But uh, the way some of these controllers operate, it's not fully replicatable and it will not end up with the same result if we go after the NAND extraction. It will be close, uh, and maybe uh, will be very, very close, but it's not always gonna be exactly the same. Uh, but if we get the device to communicate through other means, maybe the recovery will be more complete, maybe the recovery be, will be more original, and it will look uh, almost like the uh, device um, never broke before. So, first things first, we have this micro SD card. I already stripped the back of it just to make sure that there are no broken traces or anything like that. That was qu quickly done visually. Nothing is broken there. Everything seems to be good. So uh, the first step of the process, guys, let's go ahead and uh, slide this in here and um, we'll get to all these tools later. First thing I would use, slide it into a USB adapter and plug it into a DeepSpire USB stabilizer. This tool, is something that I use all the time. Um, good addition to your tool set and uh, makes things uh, very easy to narrow down. So let's switch to uh, the uh, view on the screen and we're gonna power on the control panel for it. So by default it's set up to be a hard drive, new version, came out, we'll update it after the video. 
So uh, power on the device. We get serial number, we get capacity, I don't know what well, might have been a glitch or something, but we do get the device to show up. Uh, if the device shows up, we can see that it's reading some data. We can actually start imaging it. So let's go ahead and open up PC3000 portable. I'm not going to select any uh, ports because we're not using any ports. We're going to use the uh, USB uh, port that is native on the workstation and go into data extractor and I uh, gotta create a work folder for this case portable deep spot that's gonna be the task where we're gonna keep it and we're gonna create uh, an image of this device even though we have deep spot USB stabilizer listed in the devices this is not what we choose we choose the device that is plugged into it so that's gonna be this adapter transcend is the brand of the USB adapter that I'm using for this card and we're gonna make a copy I'm gonna make a copy into a file image and uh, uh, we're gonna offline the source sure um, we have the capacity coming up uh, this is the map of the device and if we hit execute to image we see that something is starting to happen uh, if we look in the control panel here we see some forms of struggle we go into the log we see uh, errors are being thrown but over here we can control uh, error handling and we can uh, adjust the jump size so let's say we're gonna jump 100 sectors if we come across an error okay um, so the next error is gonna encounter it's going to jump 100 sectors ahead, uh, read backwards, and then up until it reaches hard to read area again, and then we'll read forward again. You see this yellow uh, line that it just drew? It's a skipping bad sectors process, pretty much. So we still got the same thing. It's not reading backwards, it's not reading forwards. Um, let's see how it's going to perform if we go into let's say uh, like a middle of the project not image it from the beginning but image it from uh, half of the map and we still get this um, poor communication it's acting up um, seems like it's trying to run on full speed here and unfortunately uh, that may not be enough for this device so um, I'm going to put this thing out of its misery on this tool for now uh, at least for now and shut it down here uh, let's switch view to something else uh, let's go in here and um, let's use uh, JTAG Easy JTAG, uh, this is the newest acquirement I picked up, this adapter actually, uh, this box I had it for the longest time. But this allows us a communica communication with the device at the lower voltages or adjusting the voltages and adjusting the speed by disabling um, uh, data buses uh, from downgrading it from like four to uh, only one. It will drop the speed, but it may improve the readout. So connecting it with the USB cable. All right, so it's opening up the tool. Uh, we have our device right here. The blue LED is on. Our damaged card is here. Slide it into adapter. That's it. That's all we needed to do. <laughs> and we're gonna go and check MMC UFS. <clears throat> Mm, so yeah it looks like it's able to read it it does show that it's 8 gigs in size so we have uh, bus width set to 1 bit frequency 1 megahertz and voltage is set to 1.8 volts for now I'm just gonna shut it down we're gonna do the final readout on this tool I want to see what the results are gonna be like but I just want to confirm something uh, before we get there and that's PC3000 flash using the um, uh, flash card adapter 
flashcard adapter does have a slot for micro SD we don't need to use this thing so we just slide that right in there the reason why I want to give this a try I've done many recoveries using this tool and this adapter for similar cases in the past but I want to see uh, what kind of response we get on sector level are we able to see any data or not so I'm gonna launch this and uh, use adapter say yes it's gonna bring up the utility and uh, we're gonna establish ISP connection through there um, or SD protocol at the lower speed so let's go into a new case navigate to um, call it ISP make an 8 gig copy and we're gonna power it on so uh, right now what we should be able to see in the uh, tool uh, is the uh, um, control panel for the power and let's go into the first of all settings parameters uh, we have um, protocol not assigned if we select uh, SD protocol and drop the speed down to 1 power on the device we get it recognized um, up here if we select the map we can begin imaging and imaging here seems to be way more consistent than it was on other tools you guys see that this green data accumulates at much faster pace uh, what happens if we step up the speed to four because they will increase the transmission for sure let's go to back to the log we're still good now it's still responding around the same speed okay but uh, what if we go into the Explorer are we gonna see some data on this device or is this device simply pretending to give us data and there's nothing but zeros in those sectors based on what I see here it's not pretend data it's actual data that we see and it's an SD card adapter um, but over here we have a FAT32 partition and this FAT32 partition um, even has a valid name no name it's all a good start guys that means we're actually seeing some data so let's build a map of all of the used sectors on this device so right now it's uh, using all of the used sectors map so what will it find everything that is accounted for everything that is uh, occupied in terms of sectors is going to be presented here so if this card is 100% uh, full or 1% full we're going to determine that after we know the amount of sectors that we're working with but uh, it does not show the information that's been formatted because it's fat and it doesn't show us the information that has been deleted so if this card uh, has been has had some data that was erased on it uh, or if this card was formatted this operation that we just ran is not gonna mm, carve out the data that was on this device since day one and from what I can see here four megabytes get out of here there's it shows nothing this is clean format unit so if we look at the root yeah, so we got system volume information and spotlight. This is a clean format on the device. So in this case, what I would do is I would create a full image of this unit, which we will do with the easy JTAG. I want to test this image out. And uh, once we got the image, 
we'll put it on our studio or we'll run it in data extractor just to explore I really want to see what this tool does but we can see that a PC 3000 is able to communicate with the device I'm very interested in finding out the performance of easy JTAG blue light is on again um, I'm gonna open up the software the card plugged in uh, check UFS and we're going to uh, read the MFC we'll save it here and now we wait yeah this estimated time is going to be extensive we're reading at um, 45 kilobytes per second that's not fast uh, but it's not slow <laughs> if it's giving us information uh, at this pace I'll take it so um, we just got to wait until this process is finished now the reason why I want to do it using this tool and not uh, PC 3000 some of you may ask like you already established connection with PC 3000 this is gonna tie up the equipment for uh, close to like 20 hours estimated time frame I don't want to have 20 hours out on PC 3000 where I can put it to work towards other projects but easy JTAG, I have no uh, things planned for it today. Take as much time as you need, my friend. Uh, just get me the data. That's why uh, I did buy this adapter because these cards do come in and they do need very slow readout process. And occupying uh, equipment that can be put towards better use was the decision driving process here. <laughs> we can do the same thing with easy JTAG. But um, PC3000, I do need it to uh, wrap up the project that we were working on uh, a couple of days ago. I want to make sure that we see this through. Some of the things that are left behind need to be caught up on. But thank you guys for tuning in. I'm pretty sure that by end of this episode, um, by the time I release this episode, the, we will have footage of what the image looks like. And uh, if the data survived, um, we'll get it. I think this card got accidentally formatted uh, when it was starting to fall apart. Format might have taken place, but that didn't solve the problem in accessibility to the card's content and therefore it got sent in. Let me know if you have any other suggestions, guys. A lot of you suggest very cool things and um, uh, I really do uh, appreciate it and I take it into account and a couple of the suggestions that I got in the comment section will actually be posted within this challenge. So if you post something that I really like, I will make a video on it. It's not a problem. Thank you for watching again. I'll see you guys all in the next one.